Thank you very much, Hans. Okay, let me start. So hello, everyone. I hope you hear me well. And um, welcome to this presentation. And I'm presenting from the capital city in Switzerland, which is a very hot day we're having today. Uh, my name is Celine Ilmas, and I'm a researcher and a teaching fellow in Switzerland, um, University of Geneva at the Department of Energy and Efficiency. And today I want to bring um, several uh, learnings, um, feedback, we call it Retour d'Experience, um, experience in French from different energy communities, district projects that we observe in Switzerland, even though we are at the very uh, early stages. Let me see, okay, perfect, mode is working. So I will talk first about what kind of innovation is happening um, technologically and also social innovation what kind of social practices are changing, emerging in different community energy typologies. And of course, what is really important to know what the utility companies or um, DSOs, we call them the distribution system operators, how they're changing their business models and practices. And I would like to show the relationship between them and the different typologies of uh, energy communities in Switzerland. And of course, like with other um, actors from the socio-technical regime, like municipalities. Then, of course, from our learnings, I would like to point out several um, policy implications and recommendations for the um, uh, developers of uh, energy communities and program managers. Then I would like to introduce a project that will be led by a huge consortium of researchers, um, municipalities and other corporation partners like companies, utility companies, NGOs and technology companies that will kick off next week in Switzerland and will run for the next uh, eight years. And we are, let's say, changing our methodology and moving towards um, living labs as a methodology and also as an intermediary um, to test uh, um, systematic ways uh, for social and technological innovations in, uh, in real life settings. So a lot of things are changing in the energy landscape. You know, it's like energy systems are being increasingly um, more concerned with climate change Transition to low carbon supply is, is targeted almost in, in any, any countries and Switzerland is not that different. Um, we have the aim to reach a net zero. Um, PVs, um, heat pumps, electrical vehicles are now distributed in urban areas where people live, um, travel and work. So there are new actors, which is the subject of the today. Um, people can now invest in photovoltaics as a community, um, storage capacities as well whilst producing, um, storing and exchanging energy services with, uh, with multiple parties, of course, through the new uh, digital platforms. Of course, such decentralization means um, new challenges, let's say, for the organization and the, the governance of this uh, urban energy systems. And better coordination of energy use and supplies is increasingly needed. And not only at the individual or on the household scale, but also at the building, neighborhood and city scale, to balance the supply and demand with, uh, within the network's electricity distribution. Um, so this diverse um, individual and community types must be governed in a very harmonized and, and very intelligent way that it contributes uh, to the energy trans of, transition of the city, of the country, um, rather than uh, distorting the, the system. So IEA reports um, now saying people-centric um, clean energy transition user-centered energy systems, this is the TCB I contribute the most, um, citizen-centric um, uh, energy transition by the European Union. Um, so the community-based energy systems have gained, um, let's say, increasing attention among the practitioners, scientists, and policymakers as a promising model or um, instrument promotion of the tra energy transition to a low carbon um, and sustainable society. And there is a like, proliferation of new concepts in the scientific literature, like different typologies and configurations are advocated by scientists for community energy projects. And also there's a, a lot of like a wide range of communities led more grassroots um, sustainable energy projects are, are being developed at the niche level all around the world. And these are like, I'll try to get some words together, linked up like many words like independency, transformation, resiliency, reduced cost and local markets, et cetera, et cetera. So EU, for example, um, let's say acknowledging the value of uh, community energy 
in the clean energy package um, for uh, for uh, clean energy for all European packages, um, they introduced two concepts. Um, I'm sure many of you know um, it's the renewable energy communities and uh, and citizen energy communities, and they both depict a particular way of um, organizing uh, collective ownership around and any energy related activity um, through a legal entity. Of course, they have to be a non commercial purpose but they also adopt like specific ownership and, and governance principles. Switzerland, being a non-EU member, they also established, a, let's say, a more unprecedented framework, let's say, um, to support community energy. Now the federal law, for example, um, allows the formation of self-consumption communities uh, and they give prosumers the, the, the right to consumption and to trade self-generated electricity entirely or partially at the place production and also create, um, let's say, cluster of um, prosumers and consu uh, consumers. For example, if your house roof is not, uh, let's say, suitable for a photovoltaic, a photovoltaic installation, you can co-invest with your neighbor on your neighbor's roof. And of course, the excess PV supply um, uh, has to be bought from the, the regional DSO um, up to a certain price. For example, in Geneva, um, it's a uh, 12 uh, uh, cents per kilowatt hour and the, the electricity you buy from the uh, regional um, DSO is uh, 21 so for a comparison where in other cities and cantons it changes and also like new concepts like positive energy districts smart cities and so on and so on are, are let's say trials in different companies so potential of the communities now let's say at the front fort of um, exploration with a key role in in, in energy transition um, transitioning the urban and energy systems towards sustainability. And like I said, many typologies are being um, implemented by law, by grassroots initiatives um, or by demonstration projects. Um, but however, we realized that the, the evidence base for these strategies, um, community energy being like the proposed as a new policy to achieve the energy transition is quite partial and fragmented, lacking insights of whether or how these um, developed community energy concepts are are contributing or affecting the energy transition so let's say that was our starting point and we decided like let's go to different community energy projects in switzerland several case studies to see what is happening inside a community and also with respect to the changes in the incubate regimes and drawing on on empirical evidence our our main aim with is was to reanalyze and and reflect on the existing frameworks in Switzerland, um, or for also for recognizing the potential and future roles of energy communities uh, in a more structured way. So we build some policy recommendation and facilitate better understanding and progress towards the towards the um, low carbon energy transition. So I have this five case studies, but I want to present um, three of them in details today which I try to choose from different typologies. And then they have a huge photovoltaic investment in all of them as the community. So the first case study is a two building of uh, 30 apartments um, inside, uh, well, on top of the rooftop, which I will show you in the next slide. There's a huge photovoltaic installation on the rooftop. And second case is, this is now more district scale, four different buildings, which then the, communicate, uh, the community, sorry, um, integrated in addition to the PV and, and energy management system into their communities on their heating, electrical vehicles, um, dishwashers and washing machines um, with the help of the utility company and the startup. Another integrated community, the case study is free. Um, this time it is houses rather than this uh, multifamily houses, we call it multifamily building, sorry, um, rather than the apartments. Uh, and it's spread around the village um, and with the kindergarten of, uh, of the municipality providing the PV supply for the community. And uh, also the, uh, the, the, uh, the municipality is a, is a community member. And fourth case is a virtual um, power plant. So they're not together that much in, a, in like a proximity, let's say, but they're spread around in a city called Valle, uh, in, in Zurich, sorry. Um, and then they are looking for different um, 15 buildings. And the famous one from Switzerland, which I think already been presented in, in users TCP, the Cartier Strom, which was a peer-to-peer -peer, um, trading community. Um, but I don't think I will have so much time for case four and case five, but then I will bring insights from these case studies also when I'm discussing the, 
the learnings from the first uh, three studies. So the first um, case study called themselves self-sufficient community of uh, Boiron, um, which is also defined by the federal law. Um, we call it uh, the FCP, which means the Real Development de Consommation Propre, which is the collection of consumers and consumers. So this community uh, emerged uh, thanks to a person who lives there. He convinced, which apparently, according to our interview with him, which took him two years approximately to convince his neighbors to jointly invest in a PV using the scheme provided by the government. And this person is someone um, who works in the geothermal energy, let's say energy sector, and who's aware of the energy issues and climate change, et cetera. And he told us during the interviews that the most um, difficult part when it comes to convincing people was actually not the price, but people not understanding how the electricity system works because people were quite scared um, of not having electricity when there is no sun. Then he had to, with presentation, et cetera, explain, okay, we can still buy electricity from the grid, um, but then it will cost us more than the PV. So they all together invest in a PV, which is, is quite a huge capacity, 70 kilowatt, um, with the scheme provided by the government. And they took a loan from the bank via the cooperative, which has um, no commercial purposes. And they saw, saw form some sort of like an internal um, market where people pay um, seven cents uh, per kilowatt hour if the supply um, of the rooftop PV is used. And if there is not enough supply, um, they bought it from the grid, which is of course more expensive and it was 21 cents per, per kilowatt hour. And then they were selling back to the regional VSO um, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Here, there had no energy management systems, like no batteries or no um, DSM demand type management tools here. So let's see what, this is an average graph of, uh, of the, let's say, last two years um, results, which is strikingly the same in 2019 and 2020. So the results in terms, that's the, the, the blue one, is in terms of auto consumption, self-consumption, we call it which is how much the PV um, production is consumed within the community. And also the self-sufficiency of the community, which is how much the consumption of the community is covered by this PV production. So naturally, like as expected, obviously, um, the, the, the self-consumption, uh, uh, the auto-consumption is high in winter since there is less PV production and higher demand. And, but there is still mismatch of demand of, um, uh, due to this mismatch of demand and of heating, mostly in the evenings and PV production being more in the uh, afternoons, it is not the uh, auto consumption is 100%. Um, um, so still PV is being sold to the grid. Uh, in summer, there is less consumption. August, um, people are being on holidays, etc. And most of the PV production was um, sold to the grid. So for self-sufficiency of the community, um, it is the opposite, obviously. Um, there is much more demand, and you can see as it gets as low as 18%. That's the December value. And the community has to buy still quite a lot of electricity from percentage of their electricity from the grid. So still, in overall, they had a 5% of decrease in, in their bills, which is maybe 50 francs per, per year for an apartment, but it's not a very much money. But of course, the community still makes um, 4,500 francs per year um, for selling electricity within and also to the grid, um, which means that they will pay back the PV installation up to 20 years. So why did I show this, um, this, uh, this community? There are two things I would like to highlight. The first one is um, from my discussions um, with the community manager um, is that the people are not developing new practices, we, as we saw that from how 2019 and 2020 were, have very similar patterns. And there is no increase in either the auto consumption or the self-sufficiency of the community. Um, they said, he told us that people even have these thoughts, okay, now we are green because we consume green, also sell green electricity to the others. So they're still not aware of the supply and demand um, matching and still quite passive uh, citizens, like not transforming their practices sustainably. Secondly, as you can see, like there is not yet a collaboration or any interaction with the regime actors, let's say, um, except for, um, for the utility company, obviously they have to buy excess PV. Um, so for now, this is fine, as the number of these such, this kind of typology is not high in, in Switzerland, neither in Geneva. So, but we have to know that, that a very large number 
if the people decides to invest in the same typology to have more solar, um, it is uh, thanks to this cheaper um, mature, mature technology, it might result problems in the operation of the electricity grid because they're very much decentralized and there is no harmonization going on with the with the uh, utility company. I would even say the spread was impossible and would definitely receive a resistance um, from the regime as the current system in Switzerland is not yet able to bear um, the fluctuating energy supply, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's very similar in, in, in other European countries as well. So the case study too, of course, um, in, in, in Eastern Switzerland, Murica Mulkek, it is a very nice uh, town. Of course, I'm not the first one who, who realized that the spread of this unharmonized decentralized systems could be tricky for the future. And here we see a very different um, configuration. So in addition to the building owner um, and where the renters and owners live, there's a very small regional, um, let's say, uh, utility company with only 60 employees. They co-invest into this um, energy uh, community, which is legal by law because they're a small SME. Not a member, but also they do a project with a startup company and then the utility company together with the startup company, they introduced an energy management system. So the purpose of this energy management system is in the community is, is very holistic actually, and um, which is the first you increase the auto consumption of the rooftop of the PV production, and then the minimize of some of the corrective costs that which the, the utility company has to pay in difference between day ahead and intraday market for the retailer of the department of the company. Um, which I will show you in the third case, and um, there will be also an involvement of a DSO, which then they have um, physical problems in the, in the grid due to this access PV. So as opposed to the first community I showed, um, this is more integrated community, I would say, also solves the problem in the regime, such as this, in this case, like for example, the need for new sources of flexibility um, coming from the, um, the, the, the end users of the, the community. Because sometimes, well, almost most of the times due to this more uh, misforecast of the regional um, utility company, utility company do not want to buy excess PV because they already bought it in the day ahead market from the European spot markets. So it's better that then, then the, the PV is more consumed in the community or did, they did not buy enough electricity in the day ahead market then they have to curtail the heat pumps at uh, some times of the day because it's going to cost a lot for the for them to buy. So the energy management system is created in a, of course, it favors the community first because that's the agreement. For example, if there is local PV production, the, heat, the heating system is not curtailed, even though it is better that the utility have it fully curtailed since the spot market um, is expensive in the intraday market. And vice versa, it is not switched on automatically if there is no PV production, just because that it is cheap in the intraday market in the in the, in the European market. So whilst the, the, the heating system is, um, is fully automated by the startup company, um, they optimize the community interest first, and there is the utility interest comes later, of course, with the with considering the comfort and uh, the efficiency of the heat pump. It's a very complicated algorithm. And for electric vehicles um, and dishwashers and washing machines, there's another scheme. They're not fully automated. For example, for as EV users, which were three, not many, they had to indicate the distance and departure of the time when they plug in their EVs and then the use of PV electricity generation, depending on that the, the car is charged or is not charged. And then through and up, there is, they're encouraging the end users to charge their EVs um, during the daytime when the PV production is high. And moreover, there is also washing machines and dishwashers. Um, they, they are semi-automated, which means uh, they are um, activated automatically, but they're, uh, when there is an overproduction of the PV, but uh, it should be manually loaded, obviously, by, by the end users. Um, they have to set a pre-request uh, for the day um, from the community members. So the end users can indicate, of course, um, when it should be finished by. And um, of course, once it's on, it's never um, interrupted just because there is no PV. So what I'm trying to say is that there is indeed um, a huge support with an interface, both in cell phones and in the garage um, to show the prices, if there is PV production, et cetera. And they have a huge interface at the entrance of the buildings, um, which I visited, it's an amazing place, and to support people changing their practices or timing of their practices with regards to commuting um, and washing and uh, washing the dishes and, and doing the laundry.
So like I said, the optimization tools um, prioritize the PV production. And if there is not, then it works on, on the real-time prices. Um, according to the interviews that they did is um, people, 50% of the people, they said they moved their washing machines and dishwashers. Car owners, which like I said, which was only unfortunately three, um, they said they, they tried to change their um, uh, charging habit as, uh, as much as possible. For example, I know that they didn't have any app in their cell phones. It was only in the garage but then they requested again from the company and then the startup company provided another one in in the garage so the self-consumption was 46 percent and then the self-sufficiency was 52 uh, percent i forgot to say the first case was uh, only 38 percent as average throughout the year so it's much higher than the first uh, study thanks to this integrated approach and um, and they received almost uh, eight percent of bills uh, for their um, end users which is quite good and um, so, but as a summary, like I said, like the community, yes, they are working with other actors for sure, but then the community um, as a, with a more integrated system, they always come the first, even though the third party algorithm is working for the utility and for themselves. Um, but there's also the constant support with information, with interfaces, how the community can, can increase um, the, their self-consumption individually and as a community. Third case study, Lugaggi Innovation Community, which is a lovely place as well in, in South, it uh, South uh, Italian part of uh, Switzerland. Um, so the neighborhood is in Ticino. Here, like I said, it's, it's houses, um, with, including only three prosumers. That is to say, yet yeah, only three of them have a PV before. So what was the problem here that before they trying to uh, build a community, there is an overproduction of PV in this village. Why? Because the kindergarten, which has a huge PV on the rooftop, which is a capacity of 30 kilowatts, um, there obviously it's closed, mostly in the summer. Um, these people also go to the urban area during the day to work. Um, these people also the first users, let's say the early adopters. Um, so there were some several electric cars and heat pumps in this area as well. So there is therefore is a huge gap between the, the well, mismatch between the supply and demand. And there was some congestion. And too much PV, according to the DSO, um, puts, pr puts pressure on the distribution grid. And is, this already has caused um, voltage issues in this village. And of course, like the, the, the reinforcement of the network is, is necessary to accom accommodate all the distributed energy resources um, congestion if this self uh, consumption of this village is not reached. So then with the encouragement of the municipality, because they were discussing a lot with the regional um, utility company, an energy community is formed. Um, then the rooftop PV of the kindergarten, the crash that belong to the municipality is, uh, is connected to the, um, let's say connected to the um, utility without everybody investing in the PV um, on their rooftops. And during the interviews, like we were discussing that indeed the municipality of uh, Kapiaska um, acted as a sort of like a public authority um, and, um, and guaranteeing fairness and um, correctness, let's say, of the whole uh, process of uh, building a community together. Um, and people were indicated that they were feeling much more um, assured when the community, uh, the, the municipality was involved in the community. So also in addition to this, um, like I said, the DSO, invested um, in a decentralized battery, which then charges a very simple algorithm, which then charges if there is PV production uh, greater than the local consumption and discharges when the local consumption is uh, greater than the PV, like purely works on a very, very simple algorithm to increase, of course, the, the, the self-sufficiency of the, of the community. Also a very basic, um, um, let's say, um, market was filled but very very similar to the first and then second to encourage the people if you buy electricity um, if you use the pv consumption of course you you have to say um you pay less um more than uh, you pay much less even than the dso because you buy it for 21 and you if you consume the pv for 16 and of course like for the community to make build more money they were selling it nine, nine cents per kilowatt hour inside where it is like the six um, um, something for, for outside. Um, so what they were doing is like the difference between the, this community buying and selling the, the electricity, they covered the cost of uh, installing, operating and maintaining the, the community infrastructure. So what is really interesting in this case, 
is what I found is like when we were discussing with the developing um, um, people like the municipality or, or the university who is hugely involved in surveys, um, that since the community is um, more interested in the self-sufficiency of the community, independency of the community, here the price is not at all shared with the, with the community members, neither by real time in the web interface, but only the self-sufficiency of the households itself and then the community of selves. So people are seeing their own consumption coming from the electric boilers, how the demand side management of electric boilers and charging and discharging of decentralized um, battery and how much it is increasing the, um, the self-sufficiency of the community um, uh, in, in general. So thanks to this um, energy management and also the battery, there is a 90% of the additional PV that was not used in the community before is now used in community increase the local self consumption by 16%, now reaching up to like 53% here. There is also because of the, uh, the peak shaving, they have some savings, uh, peak shaving, sorry, up to 55%. And now they're implemented for the heat pumps and they're gonna receive uh, um, uh, what they're foreseeing is like 15% uh, more. Um, so the technical economic analysis shows that of course there is cost reduction for the DSO, which means because they buy, well, they buy less electricity from the utility company, but then the DSO unit of the, of the utility company is um, saving a lot of money because they're avoiding congestion, other network issues due to this voltage volatility that I was mentioning. Also the cost related to this grid reinforcement um, and the, according to the calculations, the changes with the different prices of cables and transformers, um, they told me that they calculated um, that uh, eight, 15 to 18, cost reduction, which is like, which is the deferring of the feature costs. And again, like I said, community interest first, like the battery, um, the, the energy management system works for to increase the community. And then the, this is very much and clearly communicated with the, with the community members um, through workshops and information sessions. And even sometimes um, they do surveys. So key findings in, in general, like what, covering this five um, and also the things that I couldn't explain here. Um, the overall thing is in terms of technological innovation is this, what we observe, okay, know-how on PV on technologies and other technologies used on energy management systems of, uh, of distributed resources in, in, in communities and districts are increasing. Like uh, Kerti restaurant, for example, the case study I did not show, they use blockchains developed with, by spin-off companies Two other energy communities are using virtual power plants to manage the distributed energy resources in these districts with very good feasibility results actually. And new automation algorithms are being um, developed with, uh, with internal markets um, designed. In terms of social innovation, again, I'm saying this in a nutshell, we have not observed that the community members are um, necessarily developing new practices just after joining. I mean, these communities are there for two, three years, yeah. But then again, we ask the project managers whether, who ask the, well, the community members, whether anyone had different practices like adopting EV, excluding flying, redefining thermal comfort, etc. The evidence was not that much. Um, even like the changes in attitudes and skills of the people were, um, we didn't find a huge evidence. But anyway, but th there is this risk indeed, like when we were discussing this, um, this, this, that the, 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 transform, the transformative notions of um, communities via grassroots um, um, citizen-led actions indeed are losing ground to more instrument notions um, in favor of like more institutional partnerships and company-led investments. Let's say they are not yet the energy citizens that we think they are, but they are still relatively passive. But of course, unless the evidence show that the community members are aware, want to contribute, not necessarily not to know how to, but if you constantly support them with information, showing the value, then the community members are becoming more and more active citizens. Um, so we say like constant support is needed by the developers, cooperative utility company, cooperative, sorry, utility company, universities, whoever is included through workshops and flyers and interfaces. And once they see the value of it, for example, how shifting the heat pumps is increasing the self um, consumption of the uh, PV and self-sufficiency of the community, they're even asking for more stuff in Lugaja, for example, you, they said like, you can even control my 
dishwashers and washing machines. In Cartier Ashton, we even saw children have started charging their phones during when the PV production is high, as they see it from the from the, um, let's say, the interfaces. So they know better because they psychologically identify through this constant support and interfaces. New practices can be um, only, um, let's say, introduced with, with support. Oh, one more thing, we also realized that um, very little communication, online communication exists. This is something we're discussing how to build this in Switzerland, um, how the, the community members were not aware of any other community members in Switzerland. So we are trying to find out how we can Diffuse information in, in between two um, company, uh, the communities, sorry. Um, symbiotic niche innovation, uh, let's say, are adopted to solve the problems, um, not only the community and also the electricity sector. They've also incorporated more collaborative innov innovation into their practices and business models. Um, DSOs and retailers are, are cl closely working with the SMEs and technology companies um, for more granular uh, management of the community which is not possible with their current practices and technologies within the DSO. And they're also very much legally, um, uh, let's say, uh, restricted by law to reach some of, several of the information. So definitely linking up and forming partnerships and with startups, uh, this is definitely happening and more business models are formed within the companies thanks to these um, energy communities pushing them to do it. Um, these com uh, companies, they work together on common simultaneous problems, like I always say, which then solves the problem of this low self-consumption, low self-sufficiency, therefore um, helping the community members have more economic and social value. But at the same time, it solves the problems of the regime, like congestion problems, and voltage um, reality, and then some market, uh, market problems which we know in Switzerland, for example, it will cost the DSO like almost 11 billion francs to, uh, for the energy transition, they have to update their grid to accommodate all the distributed resources. So I think that's all from what I wanted to show like the findings, but of course, um, noticing the gaps and pitfalls of the existing ways of the communities in, in, in here, um, as either instruments um, implemented by third parties um, lacking innovation and transformation of the community itself, members still being relatively passive citizens, or more grassroots initiatives like the first case study I presented, but of course, lack of support of information from, from, uh, from the utilities and from the municipalities, therefore less um, changes in their practices and um, there is no know-how how, how to do that because there is no communication. So to address these issues now in, in, in Switzerland, we built a huge consortium um, funded by the Swiss Federal Office of Energy um, there will, for eight years. Um, there will be some R&D projects, pilot demonstration projects, and it is called um, Lantern. Um, and you know the magic lanterns that, uh, that which is the ancestors of, uh, the, of the slides projector. So we, we, with, this, with this project, we want to um, help citizens and stakeholders to project themselves into the future, to imagine the desirable features um, collectively which is fundamental condition, I would believe, for the, for the success of the energy transition. And our aim is to connect um, different fields of knowledge um, separated by disciplines, um, connecting science, society, and territories through the living lab methodologies um, and to using living labs as intermediaries um, for innovation. And we want to reconnect this innovative ambitions of the actors with the daily concerns of the citizens through participatory and uh, research and um, social sciences. And we will co-design, test, validate um, new products, service with programs and um, policies in most uh, energy intensive uh, activities like mobility to, to digital and building sectors by aligning different um, partners uh, on a common vision. And of course, we want to scale up uh, a portfolio of interventions um, for uh, user empowered and decarbonized um, communities and districts in Switzerland. And then in the, and we want to study these in the urban areas. So we have 11 living labs established. A, some of them are certified by the ENO, maybe some of you know, the European Network of Living Labs. Two more to build, which a capacity building program is, is, will be there to teach municipalities, councils, and, and other actors to develop such methodologies and also ecosystems. And with these um, living labs, we want to apply methods that encourage co-designing with, uh, with four types of actors, uh, which we call the, the quadruple uh, helix, the public authorities and the companies, academics, of course, us, 
and then the citizens, which as we like to call them, the, the, the non-professional designers. So where all the cooperation partners um, in the established um, uh, living labs will then provide access to infrastructure and to access to developing different projects, uh, which um, most importantly, of course, access to citizens which I didn't, if I didn't uh, sum it up wrongly, it's up to 100,000 um, 100, citizens, which we get to do um, study, even a survey, which we experiment together. And then hopefully filling the gaps and overcome the pitfalls of this technocratic deployment of communities um, or help the uh, grassroots communities and, and then transform the, the practices more sustainably with the living lab methodologies in, in communities and, and districts. So I think that's all from me. I hope I wasn't too, didn't take so much time of yours. And then um, if you have any questions, I'm very happy to receive it. Thank you.